U.S. intelligence suggests President Putin feels misled by his armed forces, resulting in tensions with top generals. Ukraine's military warns that Russia is regrouping its forces. So we have a special report from the south of the country. Shells land in these fields periodically, and the next village down the road is occupied by Russian troops. Civilians have been killed in these villages. As Ukraine braces itself for more attacks, the head of the UK's intelligence agency says some of Vladimir Putin's advisers don't appear to be telling him the truth. Advisers to Russian President Vladimir Putin are afraid to tell him the truth about how badly the war is going in Ukraine. That is the verdict from the head of the UK government's security and intelligence agency, GCHQ. In a speech in Australia, Sir Jeremy Fleming said that Russia appeared to have, and I quote, massively misjudged the situation and that morale is low within the military. Now, John Donaldson's here with that and all the other developments. I mean, there is always going to be a war of words, definitely, an interpretation of how the other side other side or the two sides are doing as well um, but also developments in Ukraine we were quite hopeful yesterday with some chat about maybe some negotiations going positively hmm. a bit more skepticism today yeah. I think and Sir Jeremy painting a picture of the Russian forces in disarray as you say the Russians would say uh, that is just propaganda let's have a look where we are on uh, the map uh, this morning and we're going to focus down in the south of the country southeast there Mariupol, which of course has suffered perhaps more than any other city during this conflict. We can bring in uh, the latest pictures we've got from Mariupol, still under siege by the Russians, barely a building left untouched. You can see they've actually uh, been burying the dead in the streets. We've got some pictures of that coming up uh, just in a moment. At least 5,000 civilians have been killed in Mariupol with conditions deteriorating. There's also uh, the promise of a ceasefire this morning to allow people to get out. Of course, we've had such promises uh, before and they have come and gone. If we bring up the map again and focus on perhaps what's going on in the north, Chernihiv there, right up in the north, and the capital, Kiev, that is, of course, where uh, the Russians pledged to scale back their operations. But as we heard from Jonah Fisher earlier, reports of shelling in both those regions this morning. And these pictures we've got from just north of Kiev, where... Ukrainian forces are securing areas recaptured from the Russians. Too graphic to show some of the pictures, bodies just lying in the streets, Russian soldiers. In his latest address, President Zelensky acknowledged that the Russians had pulled back from around the capital, but only because he said Ukrainian forces had forced them back. He pointed out that, though, that they hadn't withdrawn from Ukraine altogether. Uh, they had merely shifted their focus to the east of the country and he cast doubt on Russia's claim that it was de-escalating the fighting. We do not believe anyone. We do not trust any beautiful verbal constructions. There's a real situation on the battlefield. And now, this is the most important thing. We will not give up anything and we will fight for every metre of our land, for every person. Of President Putin coming out this morning from Britain's spy chief, Sir Jeremy Fleming, head of GCHQ. In a speech he's given in Australia, he claimed the Russian president was isolated, fighting a personal war, as he called it, with his own advisers too scared to tell him the truth. Let's just have a listen to what he had to say. It increasingly looks like Putin has massively misjudged the situation. It's clear he's misjudged the resistance of the Ukrainian people. He underestimated the strength of the coalition his actions would galvanise. He underplayed the economic consequences of the sanctions regime. And he overestimated the abilities of his military to secure a rapid victory. Well, Sir Jeremy went on to say that Russian soldiers were short on weapons and morale, refusing to carry out orders, sabotaging their own equipment and even shooting down their own aircraft by accident. So painting a picture of Russian forces in disarray, but no clear uh, steer really on what direction British intelligence thinks President Putin's intentions are or indeed what his military goals are. And I guess that's something we've been having to guess all the way through this conflict. Yeah, very much so. John, thanks for taking us through all that.
Let's go straight to our correspondent in Moscow, Jenny Hill. Very good morning to you, Jenny. So reflect for a moment um, with us about those comments from Jeremy uh, Fleming's suggestion that uh, a misjudgment of the situation by Putin. It's going to be really interesting to see how the Kremlin respond to those comments. Um, I imagine they will be dismissed as fake news. And of course, anyone in Russia who is getting their main source of information about this war from state television will be rather confused, I think, if even those comments are reported here. Um, because as far as state television goes, um, the war in Ukraine is going according to plan. They don't call it a war, of course, as you know, Vladimir Putin has in effect banned that word. Um, but the special military operation, according to pundits across state television, um, even yesterday, were saying, you know, this is a textbook war. In the future, armies will look to this Russian operation as an example, one pundit said last night. The Ministry of Defense um, late last night issued an update talking about how well everything was going, um, talking about the fact that, as we know, post those negotiations um, a couple of days ago, uh, Russian troops are likely to withdraw, they say, around Kyiv and Chernihiv. And the Ministry of Defense say, actually, this is all part of the plan. They were only really there in the first place in order to distract Ukrainian troops away from eastern Ukraine, which is now the focus of the Russian operation. They've now said they want to, in their words, liberate the Donbass region. So uh, the Kremlin remains bullish about the way that this operation is going. And don't forget that it is a criminal offence here to discredit the Russian military or to spread what the Kremlin would deem to be fake news about what they're doing. Vladimir Putin is keeping a very tight lid on the narrative about his special military operation. And any Western criticism of that will be dismissed as fake news and propaganda.